Grace, mercy, and peace be with you today through God our Father and through our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. If you grew up going to church, maybe you heard somewhere along the way that hearing the Bible affects your living. Hearing the Bible affects your living. Now, obviously, we know that hearing the Bible, the Word of God, creates faith in our hearts. It brings about good in our life. And therefore, it stands to reason that being more in God's Word means that the stronger our faith and behavior are going to become. Right? Right? Sometimes newer Christians will struggle with this idea because you're going to church, you're doing all the right things, and yet you find yourself slipping into old behaviors or having trouble believing the promises of God. And so many of us have come across this discovery the hard way in our lives that, yes, we worship and we study and we are in the Word and we pray, and yet there are still challenges there, sometimes really big ones. Worse yet, we can find ourselves on occasion becoming less attentive and less enthusiastic about hearing the word than we may have been at some earlier point. How devastatingly applicable it is, the words that we sometimes sing here at this 8 o'clock service in our offertory, right after another unlistened to sermon on Sunday morning. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a clean spirit. Here's the problem. All this hearing, all this listening, and yet sometimes things are getting worse. Not better as the scriptures promise. What's the cause of this? Part of the cause is probably natural. It's familiarity. You come here and you do this as part of your routine, weekly church services, daily quiet time for reading the scriptures and time in prayer. You can gradually assume a kind of take it or leave it attitude toward them. Furthermore, Getting away from our regular work-a-day routines and going to church means that we're shifting gears from the busyness of our lives into this setting, and sometimes our transmissions don't work so well to want to do that. It may be as the late hour that you got to bed, the nightcap that you had, the social blunder you made, the test that you blew, the question you didn't get to ask in class, the text that you shouldn't have sent, the thoughts of these things go with us and they're with you here as you're seated in the sanctuary listening at this moment and they can interfere with our receptivity to hearing the word of God. And let's face it, sometimes the preacher's not good. Sometimes he preaches a clunker. Sometimes he's tired and it requires a Herculean effort to listen to the long-winded message that he has to share, as well as a heap of faith and charity. Another part of the cause, though, is supernatural. And Jesus talks about this in our text in Matthew 13. Sometimes we don't give the devil his due. Well, the parable of the sower and the seed here in our text this morning surely does. It says quite flatly, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away that which has been sown in his heart. And I think that we've experienced this as well. I mean, we are people, after all, who can listen. I don't know about you. I'll sometimes watch a show for like the fifth time over just to have something on in the background, right? And I'm barely listening, barely paying attention, but I can sit there and have a TV show running, streaming over and over again. I can tune into a political speech riddled with cliches that everybody's heard before. And yet... 
It can be so difficult when it comes to the sermon and this matter of eternal life and death to sometimes pay attention. And we're not listening. What but the devil can account for the things that can happen during the preaching of a sermon? Have you ever noticed when you're thinking about something else, what it is that you're paying attention to when you're less attentive? Is it how you can help your neighbor Is it about this kind gesture that you can do for your frazzled spouse? Probably not. Could it be your grocery list or what you're going to be having for brunch after church? Well, maybe. But what is it? Sometimes, maybe oftentimes, it's wine, women, and song. No question about where those thoughts come from. There is no better empirical evidence, and I'm not joking here, I'm being very serious, no better empirical evidence for the existence of the devil and his work than the things that a person can think about during a sermon and sometimes even only during a sermon. But part of the cause of what I want to call attention to today is something else that Jesus emphasizes in the parable. And that is that living affects hearing. Now, let me say that again. Living affects hearing. This is the flip side, the other side of the coin of that hearing affects your living piece that I mentioned earlier. Because although we can add nothing to the power of God's word and what it can accomplish, we certainly can do things to get in its way. And Jesus makes really clear, if we are choked up with all of the cares of this world, the riches and pleasures of this life, it's going to be very hard for fruit to be brought forth. Too many thorns in our lives, be those carelessness, indifference, worry, grudges, the stuff we want, our pleasure, this stuff can choke out our receiving of the word of God and inhibit its success. So why is it that our faith feels weaker or our good works are fewer even if we are attending more services than before and being more diligent to spend time in God's Word, reading it daily? How is it that we can read God's Word more and enjoy it less? Do these developments prove that the Bible is lying when it talks about the ability of God's Word to accomplish what it will? No, it only tells us that another thing is also true, which Scripture speaks of, which Jesus speaks in our text today. That when there are too many thorns in our lives, God's Word can't get a word in edgewise. The point of our text might come out better in Luke's version of the same parable. Luke says, take care then how you hear. You see, it's not only important that we hear, it's also important how we hear the Word of God. So remember this. Although the emphasis of a parable here this morning is the power of the soil to impact the seed, that is the quality of where the seed is cast, the good news in the text is that it is the seed alone, the good news of Jesus crucified, risen, and coming again that can make the soil grow such as creating faith and helping us in our thinking, speaking, and doing. So the the next time that you are bugged out of your mind at the lack of connection between your hearing God's word and why it matters for your life, don't do the first impulse thing, which is to blame the church or the preacher or fault the system or put your hope in some reform. We need to be more traditional. We need to be more contemporary or any of those kinds of things. Rather, just check your thorns. That's all. Maybe a life of easy conquests and frequent cocktails and off-color jokes and monthly payments isn't quite so innocuous as it seems. It's possible, just possible, that these things are choking out the word of God in our lives and putting up interference. It's kind of like you don't have enough bandwidth for the amount of information that's trying to be received. And then you end up with what on your screen? 
that never-ending spinning wheel. Take care then how you hear. Bad living makes for poor hearing, which in turn makes for more bad living. And then that thing snowballs. We get caught in a vicious cycle, and the mystery of the parable suddenly dissolves. As Luke puts it, for to the one who has, more will be given. And from the one who has not, even what he thinks he has will be taken away. But thank God that there is the other circle too. And what I mean is careful hearing makes for good living And that snowballs as well. Let's give God's word every chance that we can. After all, this is the power of God unto salvation for all who believe. And it doesn't return void because the power of the Holy Spirit is making it work. It's account of God redeeming us through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus works wonders on us. And then that thing starts to snowball. Caught up in this circle, we discover it to be a glorious circle, the one described in our parable when it says, for to the one who has, more will be given. God bless you today in Jesus' name. Amen. And now may that peace which surpasses all human understanding keep our hearts and minds in faith. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.